It's not easy living with hypertension and diabetes. It's not easy. The rate of hypertension in the Caribbean and Jamaica is worse than in Africa, where our ancestors came from. Um, so it's a very significant problem in Jamaica. And 80% of our population um, who, who die, die of chronic non-communicable diseases, hypertension, diabetes, cancer, you know, and some people include, of course, mental health that helps to make all of this worse. As Jamaica struggles with limited resources to care for its almost three million citizens, it is the poor who are the majority who most often feel the injustices and disparities within the public sphere and particularly within Jamaica's health sector. Many Jamaicans are trapped in a vicious cycle of ill health. They are faced with limited choices to eat healthily. The tough demands to make a living makes it difficult for the poor to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And with the increase in the cases of non-communicable diseases, NCDs, the inability to afford proper treatment complicates an already bad situation. On top of all of this, is a strained public health system that has not been able to offer adequate care to all who need to be made well. NCDs are considered non-communicable diseases, ones that are not specifically passed on from one person to the other. So it's not like you can catch it, like the communicable diseases, which are different. And, uh, there is, there is a long-term impact when you get a non-communicable disease, so you have to be treated over a long period of time, and the impact is more severe than the other diseases sometimes. Illnesses like cancers, respiratory tract in illnesses like asthma, then you have hypertension and diabetes. The, the, the diabetic is the one that I'm really afraid of because at times whenever it goes up, I have this weak feeling, vision, not, you know, you're just overall not feeling well, not feeling well. So you know that it's gone up, so you have to go and either get your medication or something. But it's not easy living with both hypertension and diabetes. It's not easy. The epidemiology of diseases affecting the Jamaican people has changed. Um, as our economic status has improved, then we are now seeing that chronic non-communicable diseases are affecting Jamaicans more and more. In fact, cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in Jamaicans with cancer as a number two cause. And then certainly we would have the impact of intentional and non-intentional violence. So even for us at the Kingston Public Hospital, the, the kind of work that we do here has shifted as well. So, Pre-COVID, we were seeing less and less infectious diseases and more and more chronic non-communicable diseases. So cardiovascular disease, um, heart, um, you know, congestive cardiac failure, hypertension, diabetes, renal failure. Those are more of the diseases that we are seeing here at, in, in, at KPH. And um, you know what happens here at KPH as a national hospital is certainly reflective of what is happening in the Jamaican population. There are significant delays for service. And unfortunately, um, one of the things that has impacted the healthcare delivery system because of COVID 
is that many of the usual services that would impact on the care of NCDs have had to be postponed. So for example, at this time of the fourth wave, both the Kingston Public and the Victoria Jubilee Hospitals, we have suspended our routine services. So it means that many of the services that we offer, especially related to chronic non-communicable diseases, have had to be postponed. Um, and here perhaps is where the church could assist. Um, many churches have, um, you know, health clinics um, that they offer, you know, free of cost or at minimal cost um, to members of the congregation. Um, so that would be one avenue that, you know, could be used to, to assist with what is happening as a result of COVID. So we have a challenge, you know, as a church, in our ministry of healing, to really be present where there is the most sickness, to be present where there is the most deprivation and vulnerability, to be present where there is most violence and abuse. And the question is, how can the churches in Jamaica set up and work together to bring about this type of ministry. Now we as Christians, we have become entrapped in the Western way of thinking, and it has led to a patchwork approach to the human being. So if you have a physical problem, you go to your doctor, right? And if you, if you have a psychological problem, you go to your psychologist or counselor, right? Um, if you have a spiritual problem, you go to your pastor. And if you have a, a, a financial problem, I guess you go to your politician, you know. And all these different people, they, they don't relate to the other aspects of the persons. People can go to church and of course somebody could be there about to die because with a stroke. But we never stop to ask, are you taking your tablets from your doctor? We neglect the physical side. We have to recognize that the church has to have a new paradigm of ministry. And this paradigm of the ministry of the church now is not just to, to preach, right? And teach, but also to heal. And to see the person now, as, and to see salvation dealing with the whole person. And therefore the church now needs to be able to have ministries that relate to the whole person. The Jamaica Baptist Union, through the work of the Mission Agency and several local congregations, has been responding to this need for whole person healing. More and more churches are embracing health for all and as such have established ministries of healing and in some cases clinics. The need is great and if there is one thing worth noting is that the COVID-19 pandemic has served to highlight health and healing as a missional priority for the contemporary church. The health program at Linstead Baptist Church and in the Buxton Town Baptist Church as well is grounded in our understanding of what salvation is. That salvation is concerned with the whole being, the entire human being. How we live, how we eat, how we sleep. It's not just about getting baptized. And so that's the foundation of what we do. Persons develop relationship and then we added other areas, not only health, but then now we started with a prayer and counseling and so people were having problems could come in too and meet with the counselors and the persons would pray with them. Then we started the passport, um, we invited passport office and they came and so people... And the, and re the registrar? The registrar general, general. right, mm -hmm. and pass program, tearing, everything, you know, every, all the, all, it, it like a, a one-stop place. 1978 we started a part-time clinic and this was just one evening per week just a few hours per week and of course we had nurses doctors counselors social workers we still had those and that went on for a while 
But then the need, it was found that we needed to really start a full-time clinic at our church because people really needed the, the help. And so the full-time clinic was born. And of course, we had part-time psychiatrist, Dr. Allen. And afterwards, in no time, we got counselor, social worker, her partners, and uh, you name it, we had it. We had a mini pharmacy and all that. Many, many persons have given their hearts to God in this clinic. So we have a medical practitioner who comes voluntarily and he offer his services free of cost to the, to the members of the community. The challenges are, are real, and so we have things like you know, the economics of it. The other challenge we have is that we really would want to have it more often. You know, we, we currently operate once a month, but the operational um, challenges, the, 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 the administrative expense and so on. Don't think of it as being something that is incomprehensible. You know, if we, if we begin on that, at that scale, you would not, you're not going to start. Just think of offering simple services. So somebody said they have a, um, you know, their, their, their sugar level is not doing too well. So, you know, it, you just, just start small. I have to go to a doctor like every month. So when I heard about this clinic, I used to have to pay like $5,000 per visit to my doctor. Coming to this clinic, I don't have to pay a cent. I got my blood pressure check, my blood sugar check, go see the doctor, he does whatever with his trumpet, chest, chest and whatever, and gave me a prescription. I could use that $5,000 to go and get my monthly medicine. So that's a lot for me, coming to this church. Yes, I always say to my children, if I was going to be young again, I would know exactly what to do. <laughs> Just eat right. <laughs> do the right thing. Yeah, do the right thing. Yes, do the right Many, many Jamaicans are suffering and need our help. Congregations now, more than ever, need to see themselves as healing communities for the whole person. Look around you. Observe what the needs are in your church and in your communities. Many of you might already have ministries of prayer and counseling, but a church might choose to become even further involved by starting in very simple ways. What about adding to your church's weekly bulletin healthy, cost-effective recipes, health talks, on designated days, maybe engaging health professionals in your congregation or from your community to do screenings of blood pressure and blood sugar on a given Sunday. You may even choose to establish a formal clinic. It is true that many, many churches are already challenged, but start where you are with what you have. If your congregation might be sensing a call to do more in the area of health, wholeness, and healing, then visit the JBU website today for more resources meant to journey alongside you in creating sustainable ministries of healing. No one should be left behind. Let's together embrace health for all.